Why, hello, and welcome to my Alien Landscape series, where we use cheap craft paint, like this folk art, folk art multi-surface acrylic paint. The type of paint doesn't matter. This is just what I'm using. It's cheap craft paint. In the States, you can get it at like Michael's or Walmart or uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm not really sure where else, maybe Joann's. But if you're not in the States, you don't have to get this kind. It does, it, that's not the point. The point is that it is cheap craft paint. And you can just use whatever cheap craft paint you have available to you. You don't have to buy this, just use what you got. So the whole point of these is to try out an idea that you might have and without any of the guilt of wasting precious supplies. Because these aren't precious. There is nothing precious about these acrylic paints. And nothing precious at all. I think they're like a dollar tube. I will feel absolutely no guilt in wasting it if this painting doesn't go the way I want it. I'll just paint another one up right on top. There is no waste in this at all. There is no anxiety about it. We are just gonna have a good time, make a mess. And that's what these alien landscapes are, is making a mess, maybe telling a story and having a good time. So what I'm right, doing right now is laying down a whole bunch of yellow for the background. I kind of want just a yellow landscape. And if you look at the other colors of tubes I got, I got some pinks and I got a little bit of purple and we're just gonna see what this turns into. I, see, the thing is, I like going into a painting without much of an idea. And the reason why I do that is because then I won't be disappointed at what the end is because I didn't have I didn't have an expectation of what it was gonna turn into. It's just playtime. This is, this is fun for me, just to make it up as I go and see where all of these itty bitty little decisions take me. And so I started adding the landscape. Uh, you, you can kind of, if you squint, you can see where the land is and where the sky is and how it kind of blends in the back. And so what I'm going to start doing now is adding detail into the sky. We're gonna, Because, well, the thing is, the thing is, with landscapes, if you want to make a cohesive looking landscape, you need to, I wouldn't say mirror, but it, it needs to rhyme the sky and the earth. It, it needs to have parts that are similar, parts that have um, bits of themselves in it. So, like, if I was doing an actual, you know, Earth landscape instead of uh, this alien landscape that I'm currently doing, I would have, in a lot of cases, just little bits of whatever is in the land to also kind of mirror up into the clouds. So, like, if, if, there's a, if we're in a forest, and there's a lot of green. Just a little bit of that green would make it into the clouds above them. It's just a way to make everything look a bit more cohesive. So in this imaginary landscape that is very uh, yellow, orange, and oh look at this, it's gonna be a little pink too. Maybe this one's gonna be called yellow pink. I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be the yellow pink alien landscape. Yes it is. And we're gonna see what, what, what this is gonna turn into because I haven't quite decided yet. Of course I haven't, I'm making this up as I go. But I can tell you as is right now, it already starting to look a little Dune-ish. Have you read the book Dune? It's a, ve it's a very, very classic sci-fi book. But that was a planet of very, very desert-like circumstances. And these very large worm-like creatures lived in the in the sand and the dunes. I'm not. I'm. I, this is a very old book, but I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you a synopsis of it because maybe you haven't read it, and um, it it is worth reading if you have not read it. But so here's my yellow pink landscape that is already turning out to be a little dunish. Um, I did not do that on purpose, but you know, happy accident. Maybe it's time for me to revisit the book. I have a, okay, I'm a, I'm, I've always been a voracious reader. I, I've always spent a lot of my time reading. And well, as an adult, I haven't spent a lot of time sitting and doing reading, like in a physical books, but I do a lot of audiobooks. I've kind of, I've kind of switched over. Uh, mostly because I, I can, I can do that while I'm doing other stuff. And so I've usually got some kind of book. I don't, I don't listen to music so much anymore. I, I, I write a little music, but I, I don't really listen to music. But I'll, I'll listen to a lot of podcasts and, and books. And that, that seems to be what I like now. A very short list of books that 
I want to revisit, and I every once in a while will revisit. And Dune is one of those books for me that I will. Uh, I mean, it's it's a series, but I mean, really, the the the, the only real Dune book is the first one. The the eight thousand other ones afterwards are the. <laughs> I've read them all naturally. You had to. I had to. I needed to know where the story was going to take me, but. You're not going to miss much of anything if you skip all the other ones. Just read the first one. The other ones can be skipped unless you also have to know where everything takes you like I do. But it can be skipped. It's okay. I'm, I'm not going to be offended if the only one you read is the first one. Trust me, it's the only one I think of value. But we're at the point of the painting where I'm starting to add parts of the landscape that um, I'm, I'm kind of smoothing into uh, landscape features. So think of maybe like... A rocky and craggy bits of, of, of desert and we're, we're just gonna smooth everything out because the reason why everything's gonna be smooth is probably because there's gonna be a lot of wind that moves all the little bits and pieces of sand and rock and things all around all this landscape so you as a viewer looking farther out into the landscape your, your view would be obstructed with it would almost be like fog if you've ever been in a sandstorm, it's it's a very interesting phenomenon that it, it's like fog, but it's not fog. And it, it, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts your face. It hurts your eyes. You don't want to open your eyes. It's, it's Everything hurts. It's uncomfortable. It gets into all of your clothing. It's, it's just, it gets everywhere. You'll find it a week later in something that you've already washed twice and it's still there. So thank you, dumb brain, for making me feel uncomfortable about just looking at this painting, thinking of the sensation of sand in my drawers that I can't get out. <laughs> and this light purple lavender color that I've added to the sky is kind of like uh, sand, uh, sand fog. Uh, <laughs> I'm not real. I'm not familiar with the terminology, but I'm cheating a little bit here with some. Uh, nicer acrylic not because you have to but it because it's what I have <laughs> it's what it's what I have so that's why I'm using it and you can fight me <laughs> you just uh, use a neutral brown and just add that to some of the purple and you'll get a very interesting mauve color and that's that's what I'm using here right now and I'm gonna add this to the landscape because I need I need some more muted colors in this because it, it, it's quite bright and I, I just need a little bit of mutedness to it to uh, add some a little, a, a little more contrast. If everything is bright, then nothing is bright. Does that make sense? Maybe it's just me, but for for, for these land shapes that we're adding right now, we're we're gonna we're gonna give it a base of a more neutral mauvey kind of color. And I'm just gonna start sketching in little spots of where I want these rocks to go. Maybe add a little bit of pink at the bottom, give it a little bit of a gradient, and we're, we're, we're just we're just gonna put it in because it doesn't matter where it's going. We get to make it up. We get to put whatever landscape feature we want anywhere we want in this painting at all. It doesn't matter where it is. This is just where I've decided to put it. And we're gonna ground her into the landscape by dragging over little bits. Do I have any method for this? Absolutely not. No, I don't. Kind of make it up as you go. We need some more purple here. We're gonna add a li little bit more of this just to add some lightness right here. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some fog right here that's coming down this embankment. Well, you know, em embankment is not the right word because embankment kind of implies a very small landscape structure. This, th this is gonna be big. This is a giant piece of rock that is holding itself against the wind and the accumulating sand on both sides of it. Do you think animals live in it? Little snake and bug kind of things and little beetles and things that can survive in very, very high heat and the threshing of wind and very, very brightness. Do you, what kind of travelers would walk through this? What what kind of gear would you have to wear? What would what would footwear be like for here if you wanted to hike? If you wanted to hike up this little little crest in this mountain structure, what would you have to wear? Would you have to cover your entire body in cloth? It would have to be something that uh, kept away, kept the wind out, kept the wind away from your skin to protect your skin barrier. It'd have to be 
something that you could also vent because if you started because if you started heavily sweating during your hike what would happen to that moisture that that the moisture that your body expels would it would the heat cook it would you become a turkey dinner <laughs> in your own little suit or would it be like dune and where they had to collect the moisture that your body expelled and reuse it would would this landscape be that void of water? Would that be necessary? That'd be a very interesting kind of uh, atmosphere to be in. What that would feel like. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm already uncomfortable thinking about the sand. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of sand. <laughs> I'd have to be very bundled up to survive in this landscape for sure. I wonder what kind of art the people of this kind of landscape would make. Would they make sculptures, like like stone sculptures that might be able to uh, survive the the thrashing of sand and wind over time? What, what would they make? Would they make paintings inside of caves that would be um, safe from the uh, from the elements? I mean, what what would it be like? Maybe this is a culture without visual arts. Maybe all of the arts are audio. Maybe it is, the art is storytelling. Maybe, maybe history is passed down orally. And that is how time is kept through the ages and the generations of their people. I can imagine great gatherings among the sheltered places of their world where they would teach each other and share and maybe tell through through song the uh, the passing of time. Maybe there are specialized instruments that imitate the different sounds of the wind as it goes through the, the pieces of landscape. Because, you know, wind can sing sometimes as it moves through things. So maybe part of the instruments are singing instruments that make those sorts of sounds that go along with the wind. Maybe that's part of the culture. Singing to the wind, singing with the wind, and passing passing your story along through the ages, through the sweeping sands, and through time. Maybe these are a people who have skin that is so rough that it can withstand the, uh, the, the wind and the sand as it moves. It's like, like a lizard. They have very thick, uh, coarse skin covering them that will allow allow them to move without um, without clothing, without that kind of technology. Maybe they have adapted to this landscape in that way. Because humans are not very uh, very well adapted to uh, their current climate and the current planet that they are on. Um, we cannot exist without clothing, without heat, without um, treating uh, foods in a way that our stomachs can handle it. There's not much that we can eat in a raw matter, and there's not really any places that we can exist without without having clothing to protect our skin. But that doesn't mean that, that it would be that way for all beings on all different kinds of planets. Um, oh, look at this part right here. Ooh, see that that yellow spot that came up where maybe there's a there's the a sun peeking out through the the clouds see that's my favorite part of this painting and it, and it was it was it was an accident i didn't even plan it and it's just see sometimes sometimes you get lucky and these happy little accidents come along like that sky it's my favorite part of this painting of all the parts of this it was an accident that i like best and that is the exact reason why I don't go into these with very much planning at all. And I just let things happen and see where it takes me. Sometimes you get a delight, sometimes you get a failure. And since we're using cheap paint, it doesn't matter if it's a failure. You didn't really waste much of anything. It's cheap paint. There's nothing precious about it. And so we, if you end up not liking it, you just paint over right on top. You do something else instead. No worries, no harm. And you know, I'm really liking this one. I like where it's going. I even like the story behind it because, you know, I, some of these, I feel like I could turn them into actual stories and bulk out the that part of it. And maybe I will. Don't hold me to it. Who knows? But thank you for hanging out today. I've had a really good time with this one. I have. 
And if you want to try it, please do. Keep your cup full and uh, make some cool stuff, okay?